Hello China Watchers and welcome to Silk Celluloid, your threat to the Middle Kingdom. I'm your host, Ryan Carroll. This episode is part one of part two of SilkCelluloid.com's podcast that will examine Beely Beely Group's acquisition of NetEase Comics. For our fourth episode here at Silk Celluloid, we were actually going to discuss the box office inequality and the potential for a coming China box office bubble which would be a larger formatted piece that examines how many local films were profitable in Q1 and Q2 at the China box office, then compare those numbers to the the end-of-the-year box office data provided by a jointly released report from Alibaba Pictures Film Distribution Unit and WeChat's media account, Dusha TV. So look forward to that podcast episode coming soon. But this incredible ACGN news was far too important not to address, and that's why we're pushing that podcast back. Now, if you've been following us, you will know that one of our primary focuses here on Silk Celluloid is the burgeoning ACGN market of China, an industry that will reach 72 billion US dollars in revenue only in China by the year 2020. Now, this is a number I personally believe this industry could potentially hit before that time. ACGN, for those who do not know, is an abbreviation of the Combined Interconnected Industries in China of anime, comics, games, and light novels. ACGN is sometimes simply referred to as ACG, leaving off the very foreign concept of light novels that originated in Japan back in the 1970s and has some association with manga, but is more along the lines of pulp fiction or the old serialized stories before World War II. Um, So if you see either ACG or ACGN, just remember that either of them are referring to the same thing. I always add the in for light novels due to their overlooked importance to the industry in China, especially in regard to freemium e-publishing, specifically Tencent literature, which is also referred to sometimes as China literature in English due to the changing of the company's name on multiple occasions over the last several years and occasionally due to translations specifically of the company's name in Chinese to English. Now, Tencent literature, China literature is a topic we will focus on in a later podcast, but you may check out our articles under the category Tencent over on our website, silkcelluloid.com, that touch on this digital publishing platform and its significance in the overall entertainment and culture industries in China, and not just to ACGN. Now here at Silk Celluloid, we think a better description of the industries of ACGN, anime, comics, games, light novels, is Chinese anime, manhua comics, games, this one doesn't change, but it refers to games associated with other ACGN content, and freemium light novels, which is a reference to e-publishing platforms like Tencent Literature and ChinaAll.com. We here at Silk Celluloid like to make this distinction, uh, not just to help Westerners understand specifically what the industry is in China, but because as the industry grows, ACGN is becoming more distinct from its Japanese counterparts, which was the catalyst for creating this entire industry in the Middle Kingdom. Now, moving on to the meat of the podcast, and just a quick note, due to a special request, we are actually recording the video of this podcast, so you may see your host in action, see what I look like, and see my home office. Uh, Earlier on, my dog was behind me, so if you see a big white husky, um, just ignore it. (laughs) Uh, And we will be putting up the video of this podcast on our Silk Celluloid YouTube channel. The important news um, that has pushed back the episode we were going to do is Beely Beely acquiring NetEase Comics assets and copyrights. NetEase Comics is the digital comic book platform from NetEase Games, 
the second largest gaming company in China, and one of the top 20 internet and gaming companies worldwide. The price of this acquisition and the totality of it has yet to be fully made public. As this news was just announced by Rita Liao over at TechCrunch, uh, Rita Liao is formerly was a tech reporter for Tech in Asia and Techno and Tech Node. Um, so if you're not following her, I really recommend you should, uh, because Rita provides small details that are typically not reported on in other trades and publications. Now, what I mean by the totality of the acquisition not fully being made clear at this time is that Beely Beely Group is not purchasing all of Netty's comics properties or copyrights. One known group not being sold in this acquisition is Netty's co-developed superheroes with Marvel Comics. Now, these two co-developed superheroes are the Warriors of Three Sovereigns and Cyclone, two superhero properties that live in the Marvel multiverse but currently are not in the official 616. But that does not mean they will never eventually join the 616 main universe. And to learn more about this cross-cultural partnership between Marvel Comics and NetEase Comics, uh, please see our article, Marvel Goes Manhua, on SilkCelluloid.com. In this sale, NetEase officially states that they are moving away from these lighter assets to focus more on their core business which is obviously PC and mobile, mobile games, uh, along with the internet services that NetEase offers, such as advertising, email, and e-commerce. The comic assets and copyrights that will remain at NetEase um, could stem from their connection of NetEase wishing to maintain them for other vertical developments across their gaming divisions and potentially other new platforms. Or these copyrights or assets could actually be IP that directly stem from games previously issued by NetEase. And they don't want to have any IP, intellectual property conflict between what NetEase owns and what Bilibili has just acquired. This assumption I am speculating on is due to NetEase being one of the largest gaming companies in the world. Uh, recently, NetEase co-developed the Diablo Immortal mobile game which is the very first mobile game in the beloved Diablo series. Now, this announcement was incredibly decisive to male fanboys at BlitzCon. It was almost as decisive as The Last Jedi was to male fanboys of Star Wars, if you kind of see where I'm going with this. Uh, we have specifically an article addressing this, uh, addressing the Diablo Immortal game over on SilkCelluloid.com and the potential reasoning behind Activision Blizzard going the mobile game route with their Chinese gaming partner NetEase. I'll give you a hint, it's all about female gamers. Now getting back to the main focus, The Motley Fool, uh, over at The Motley Fool, they speculated that this asset light transition by NetEase is to focus on their core and growing businesses and divisions, specifically NetEase Cloud Music, the second largest streaming music service behind Tencent Music, which just did their IPO on the New York Stock Exchange, raising 1.1 billion US dollars. I find this analysis incredibly interesting for Motley Fool, as it was not the first thing that popped into my mind, but it actually makes sense. On SilkCelluloid.com, we have an article specifically discussing the overlooked ACGN deal between Netty's Cloud Music and Sony Music. For the distribution rights, uh, for the distribution copyrights, I should say, uh, that's more specifically of a Chinese uh, thing, of Japanese anime music in China. And let me tell you, Japanese anime music is incredibly huge, not just in Japan, but also in China itself. And NetEase Cloud Music getting the distribution copyrights from Sony Music to distribute this Japanese anime music is incredibly big. And it was a very, very overlooked story. And 
In our second episode of the Silk Celluloid podcast, we actually did a deep dive into Tencent Music's IPO and how it's not just the Spotify of China, but something much more important. So go over to, uh, to SilkCelluloid.com, do check out the article on NetEase Cloud Music, and go back and listen to episode two of the Silk Celluloid podcast uh, to, uh, to go in and really find out why Tencent Music Music's IPO was so significant and important, not just for China, but worldwide. Now, this analysis from The Motley Fool came just before the recently announced, which was actually today, before I started recording this podcast, of NetEase Cloud Music and South Korea's Cube Entertainment striking a partnership for NetEase Cloud Music to stream Cube's entire K-pop music catalog in China. And K-pop is probably, not, not probably, it is the largest uh, music industry in all of Asia. And it's not just the largest music industry because it's so big in Korea itself. It's the largest music industry because it is incredibly popular all throughout East Asia and Southeast Asia. I remember when I lived in China, uh, I would go to a hot pot uh, near my apartment and they actually had TVs set up all over the hot pot and they played on a loop K-pop music the entire time. Specifically, the, the, the all-girl uh, pop bands. Now, this deal between uh, Korea's Cube Entertainment and NetEase Cloud Music for uh, Cube's K-pop music catalog actually caused Tencent Music stock, stock here in the U.S. to drop significantly. It actually dropped 4.2% on the day that this partnership between NetEase and Cube was announced. Now, whatever the reasoning may be for NetEase Comics selling their assets and copyrights to Bili Bili, um, it is associated with uh, their asset light restructuring. And the asset light restructuring is due to the nine month period of 2018 where there were no new game licenses being issued for monetization, specifically monetization in China. NetEase was not the only entertainment tech company to uh, do a asset light restructuring as uh, Tencent did one back, I believe in November after losing 220 billion US dollars in valuation. And this was after earlier in 2018, Tencent reached a valuation of over half a trillion uh, U.S. dollars, becoming the fifth largest uh, company in the world, and it actually pushed Facebook from the top five position. And there's other companies such as Baidu, the Google of China, and JD.com, uh, which is the direct competitor to Alibaba's Tmall uh, or Taobao uh, e-commerce platforms. These companies have all been doing asset light restructuring. So it's not just NetEase. Now, just recently, uh, a the newly formed regulatory bureau uh, that is now overseeing all of the game licenses uh, began issuing new game licenses for monetization in China. Uh, but of the first 80 new game licenses issued, neither the gaming giants NetEase Games or Tencent Games made the list. So that means out of 80 new licenses, the only licenses that have been made public so far, NetEase and Tencent did not get a single one. And I speculated over on our Twitter account, out at Silk Celluloid, um, if you're not following us, please do, that this could be due to the fact that the new regulatory bureau viewed these two gaming giants as being able to write out this difficult period compared to smaller gaming companies. My analysis was actually uh, was actually backed up by other Chinese game analysts in China itself, making similar assumptions in the following days after I posted that tweet. Though some insiders over in China have pointed out that uh, these NetEase and Tencent being left off this list might purely be due to the complete lack of organization and structure among the new regulatory bureau itself, creating a, that had created a backlog 
that may take over a year to issue as there were 3,000 games that had applied for these licenses over the nine-month blackout period. Now, uh, getting back to Nettie's comics, uh, this sale actually makes complete sense, not just for Beely Beely, but for Nettie's Incorporated, the, the parent company of Nettie's Games and Nettie's Comics. As to much of my surprise, Beely Beely did not previously have a digital comic book division, even though its core business is ACGN, Chinese anime, manhua comics, which is completely digital publications. There's only digital comics being released in China at this moment. Uh, physical publications is quite rare, and it's not really the business model that we see over there like we do here. Um, we also have among Chinese anime, manhua comics, games, and freemium light novels. And this is the core business of Bili Bili. Now, to give you an idea of Bili Bili's dominance in ACGN, uh, Bili Bili, the foundation of the company, has always been streaming video. And this streaming video stems from anime type content and manga type content originally coming out of Japan. But now we're seeing more user-generated content being produced and put up on the platform. And Beely Beely itself, and along with uh, several other major players like Tencent Animation, are producing Chinese anime for the Chinese market, which is actually being supported by the state government, the Beijing government itself. And streaming video, uh, Beely Beely actually controls 7.5% of the total streaming video market in China. And this is a subject we actually dedicated an entire article to at, on silkcelluloid.com. And beyond streaming video, uh, it's the fourth largest or fifth? I'm sorry, I should have looked that up. I forget. Go check out the article and you'll, you'll see if it was the fourth or fifth largest. I want to say it's the fourth uh, largest streaming video company in China. Now beyond streaming video, uh, another growing segment is live streaming. And this is not just a growing segment for Beely Beely, but it's a growing segment in China as a whole, especially among Beely Beely's primary users, Gen Z, uh, which make up, the Gen Z generation actually makes up 82% of Beely Beely's 93 million monthly active users. And 75% of those monthly active users, AKA Generation Z, are closer to the age of 17 than they are 24. And uh, when we're talking about this 82% figure and we're talking about Gen Z, they really do focus, especially when we're talking about ACGN, they really do focus on the age group of 17 to 24 years old. Now, the largest uh, revenue source, the majority of Beely Beely's revenues in 2018 actually came from games, and it's games associated with anime, manhwa, manga, etc. So it's games within the ACGN industry. And games made up 69% of Beely Beely's revenues uh, in China for 2018, and just like Tencent Game and NetEase Games, uh, Beely Beely was actually affected by that nine month blackout period. So we should be actually seeing revenue growth for Beely Beely um, as they take on uh, new divisions, new aspects of business, and also being able to monetize on games in 2019. And Beely Beely is actually listed in the New York Stock Exchange, and it did its IPO back in February, raising 483 million US dollars. Now we're gonna wrap up part one of our two-part episode on Beely Beely's acquisition of Nettie's Comics assets. And in part two, we're really gonna delve in to the information available on the digital manhua comic industry in China talking more specifically of how this acquisition by Beely Beely and their move into the digital manhwa comic space, along with who is the actual leader in the ACG and industry in China, specifically in manhwa, and it's probably a company you China watchers may not have heard of before. 
So if you're enjoying this podcast, uh, please hit like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're listening to us via our host, CastBox FM, and wish to support us, please feel free to use the box token option from Content Box on CastBox FM. This wraps up our podcast from SilkCelluloid.com. So until next time, stay tuned, China Watchers. I'm your host, Ryan Carroll.